Dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure and an honor to welcome you on behalf of the governing board of the Swiss National Bank to the Karl Brunner Centenary event. Many of you have traveled a long way to join us today. Some of you even knew Karl Brunner personally. Your memories are of particular value to this event. Thank you all for making the effort to attend. Karl Brunner would have turned 100 this year. The SNB is marking this by dedicating two celebrations to this important Swiss economist. At the first part of today's event, the commemorative seminar, four speakers who knew Karl Brunner very well on a personal level will honor his extensive and influential work. However, we do not want this commemoration of Karl Brunner to be just a one-off. We want to pay tribute to his work on a more regular basis. This is why the Swiss National Bank has created the Karl Brunner Distinguished Lecture Series. As an annual event, it will honor academics whose research is of particular relevance to central banks. Central banks need up-to-date knowledge of the very latest research in order to conduct monetary policy and to respond effectively to new situations. The unconventional monetary policy measures taken in recent years have shown once again how important this knowledge is. The lecture series offers prominent authors the opportunity to give a public lecture to explain their work. We are very pleased that Ken Rogoff will give the inaugural Karl Brunner lecture this afternoon. But first, it falls to me to open the commemorative seminar. I would like to extend particularly a warm welcome to our four speakers. The first is Alan Meltzer, co-author and friend of Karl Brunner's for many years. It will be followed by Benjamin Friedman. Ben Friedman always held Karl Brunner in the highest regard, despite the fact that in the context of potentially unstable money demand, he began to question Karl's advice of using monetary targets as early as the 1970s. The third speaker will be Charles Bosser, a long-term colleague of Karl Brunner's at Rochester and his successor as publisher of the Journal of Monetary Economics. And finally, our fourth speaker will be Ernst Baltensberger, who worked with Karl Brunner during his time as a young professor at the Ohio State University. Let me begin with a short summary of Karl Brunner's life and work. In the last century, Switzerland produced a number of remarkable and prominent economists. One of these was Karl Brunner, born 100 years ago on the 16th of February 1916 here in Zurich. He studied economics at the University of Zurich and the London School of Economics. After completing his doctorate, Karl Brunner began working at the Swiss National Bank. I regret to report that he was apparently not very happy here. <laughs> the world of central banking in which he found himself struck him as outdated, and he appears to have been under-challenged. He seems to have had a similar experience during his time at the University of St. Gallen. So the young Karl Brunner decided to try his luck abroad. At the end of the 1940s, he emigrated to the United States to take up a visiting position at the University of Chicago. Two years later, in 1951, he moved to Los Angeles to begin an academic career at the University of California. There he worked his way up from assistant professor to associate professor before being made a full professor in 1961. In 1966, he was appointed professor at the Ohio State University. He then moved to the University of Rochester in 1971, where he became the director of the Center for Research in Government Policy and Business, now the Bradley Policy Research Center. During this period, Karl Brunner visited Europe frequently, having accepted a professorship at the University of Constance in Germany and later the University of Bern in Switzerland. In 19 in 1979, Karl Brunner was named 
the Fred H. Cohen Professor of Economics at the University of Rochester, a position he held until his death on the 9th of May 1989. Karl Brunner made a name for himself as a leading monetary theorist and a visionary who strived to change the world, both in academia and economic policy. He founded two of today's leading journals in the field of monetary economics, the Journal of Money, Credit and Banking in 1969 and the Journal of Monetary Economics in 1975. He launched the Constant Seminar on Monetary Theory and Policy in 1970. This event is still held annually and is probably the oldest macroeconomic symposium in Europe. In the early 1970s, Karl Brunner founded the Carnegie Rochester Conference on Public Policy together with Alan Meltzer. With their sights set on US monetary policy, the two of them also founded the Shadow Open Market Committee, the SOMC, in 1973 in response to President Nixon's wage and price controls, which they both considered misguided. The aim of the SOMC was to evaluate monetary policy choices and decisions made by the Federal Open Market Committee. A list of Karl Brunner's academic work makes for impressive numbers. In the 43 years his career spans, 234 publications of various economic disciplines were issued, including books, conference papers, and articles for academic journals. Karl Brunner wrote on monetary theory, monetary policy, and general macroeconomics, on econometrics, international financial markets, and public choice. He also explored questions relating to the philosophy of science and moral philosophy. One particularly important contribution of Karl Brunner's is his work on the theory of money supply. His theory explains how the behavior of different economic agents, such as the central bank, private financial institutions, and the public influence the stock of money and credit in an economy. He also sought to link his theory of money supply to a theory of aggregate behavior. In other words, he wanted to explain how financial institutions affect the relationship between money and output. This work addresses some important questions. For instance, what role does credit play in the transmission of monetary stimuli? Or how do changes in central bank's balance sheets affect output? These questions had receded into the background prior to the latest financial crisis, but have since returned to center stage. Together with Milton Friedman and Alan Meltzer, Karl Brunner developed a corpus of ideas for which in 1968 he coined the term monetarism. He was later to become dissatisfied with this term. However, feeling it was appeal applied too narrowly and not long adjusted to his original ideas. Let me add some local flavor here. Karl Brunner's original thoughts on monetarism date back to his student days in Zurich. He had started a round of discussions with three fellow students in which they talked about economic literature. The weekly meeting point was in the Grüne Heinrich, the Green Henry, cafe not far from here on Bellevue Square. Professor Jörg Niehans, another of the great Swiss economists of his generation, remembers a discussion around 1942. At issue was a paper claiming that the quantity theory of money, the theory of the link between a change in money and the subsequent change in the price level, had reached a dead end. This prompted the group to spring to defense of the quantity theory, with Karl Brunner being the most vocal supporter. So the ideas of monetarism began to take shape in the Grüne Heinrich Café 26 years before the actual term was coined. Well, according to Karl Brunner, the key tenets of monetarism are, first, central banking activities shape the movements in the country's monetary base over time. Second, fluctuations of the monetary base are responsible for movements in the broad money supply over the course of an economic cycle. And third, 
accelerations and decelerations of the money supply are followed by temporary accelerations and decelerations in economic activity first and permanent changes in prices later. In contrast to original Keynesian economics, monetarist, monetarism therefore holds that monetary policy is a powerful instrument for managing economic activity. Nevertheless, monetarists concede that monetary policy transmission is subject to long and variable time lags. They believe fine-tuning the economy is thus destined to fail from the outside. Karl Brunner was therefore skeptical of activist monetary policy, that is policy solely committed to smoothing the business cycle. He felt that activism is only justified if a central bank has access to better information than the public. He doubted that this situation ever actually occurred. Karl Brunner concluded that central banks should focus on achieving price stability via pre-announced monetary targets. He was convinced that monetary policy should be rule-based, not discretionary. These convictions resonate in Swiss monetary policy to this day. Allow me to briefly address this point. Switzerland exited the Bretton Woods International Exchange Rate System in January 1973. The Swiss National Bank then opted for an autonomous monetary policy strategy known as monetary targeting. During this critical time, Karl Brunner was in regular contact with the Swiss National Bank. He was highly influential in drafting and implementing the new strategy, which included some important monetarist features. The new approach stipulated that the goal of monetary policy was to ensure price stability by steering money growth according to a pre-announced intermediate target for a specific monetary aggregate. The idea was that with money growth on target, actual output would grow in line with potential output and the price level would remain stable over the medium term. The Swiss National Bank pursued this monetary targeting strategy from 1974 to 1999, effectively a quarter of a century. The monetarist approach served Switzerland well. The SNB managed to achieve one of the lowest and most stable inflation rates in the world during this period. The monetary targeting approach of that period is the foundation on which the SNB's credibility and reputation for maintaining price stability has been built. And yet, while monetary targets were useful in controlling inflation after the breakdown of the Bretton Woods system, they were dropped in the end. For the SNB's monetary targeting strategy to be successful, the demand for base money had to be stable. In the second half of the 1990s, this stability was no longer a given, partly due to innovation in the interbank payment system. The monetary targeting approach thus became increasingly difficult to implement. Consequently, a new strategy for our monetary policy was needed. The new strategy was introduced at the end of 1999 and which we still use today. The new strategy was the result of a fundamental review. It is as a flexible response to changing economic structure. One key change was the decision to use interest rates rather than the monetary base as an operational target. The shift reflected the maturing of the Swiss money market and our improved understanding on how to set and manage short-term interest rates depending on macroeconomic conditions to achieve our goal of price stability. However, monetarist principles still play an important role at the SNB. Let me briefly outline three key monetarist concepts that feature in our current monetary policy strategy. First, price stability. This is the prime objective of monetary policy in Switzerland and is to be achieved in the context of flexible exchange rates. Second, an explicit monetary policy framework. This ensures that the principles underlying our monetary policy decisions are communicated transparently and understandably to the public. And third, quarterly inflation forecasts. Inflation forecasts extend 
the monetarist tradition of using monetary targets as the main indicator for monetary policy decisions and as the principal communication instrument. Clear communication by central banks was an issue that Karl Brunner cared passionately about. He was critical about the communication of central banks during the 1970s and 1980s. According to him, their communication was too elitist and opaque for the general public to understand. He believed firmly that central banks should formulate their message explicitly and consistently. Most central banks have since committed themselves to transparency. Our current strategy continues the tradition of transparent communication that we established during the area of monetary targeting. Clear and consistent communication of our decisions and our analysis are integral to fulfilling our duty of accountability. And I'm convinced that it's also important to improve the efficiency of monetary policy. We have thus transferred the robust elements of our old monetary targeting strategy to our new approach. For these ideas, we owe a debt of gratitude to monetarism and its advocates. At the same time, our strategy has become more flexible when it comes to the type and deployment of monetary policy instruments. We, know, we now have more options available to us than in the past. This has enabled us to respond appropriately and flexibly to numerous monetary policy challenges we have faced in recent years owing to the financial crisis. And this flexibility has only been possible thanks to our unwavering commitment to price stability. Karl Brunner deserves special recognition because of his theoretical contribution to our monetary policy strategy. However, the recognition should be much broader. He was keen, more generally, to move away from theory for theory's sake. He believed that economics should focus on its core task of explaining empirical phenomena. If it did not, he claimed, it risked degenerating into an elegant but ultimately self-serving intellectual game. In Karl Brunner's mind, the job of an economist is to investigate economically relevant problems, to come up with an appropriate theory, and then to test this theory empirically. His career is a prime example of positive interplay between academic research and central bank practice. In particular, it highlights the importance of cross-fertilization between monetary theory and monetary policy implementation. Karl Brunner was one of the first to recognize the significance of such exchange of information and ideas between academia and central banks. Today, this custom is widely accepted as best practice and the standing of research at central banks has improved substantially in recent decades. We're also paying homage to Karl Brunner because of his close ties to Switzerland. As an expatriate Swiss economist, he cultivated a strong and enduring relationship with our country's academic community. This was borne out in his dedicated efforts to raise the intellectual bars and improve teaching standards. Karl Brunner's desire to modernize Switzerland economics faculties was in inspired by his experience in the United States. He appreciated the merit meritocratic mindset he encountered across the pond and remained convinced that strong arguments matter more than a person's position in the academic pecking order. We are thus very grateful to Karl Brunner for his many contributions to improvement of monetary theory and policy, economic research and teaching both in Switzerland and around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you will enjoy today's events. It's an excellent opportunity to engage in the kind of stimulating dialogue Karl Brunner valued so highly. Thank you very much for your attention. <clears throat> Now, let me give you a quick overview over today's program. The first part, the Karl Brunner Commemorative Seminar, which is reserved for invited guests only, will run until 4 p.m. 
The second part of the event is the Karl Brunner Distinguished Lecture Series held by Ken Rogoff. The topic of his speech is Rethinking Central Bank Design. As it is open to the public, this lecture between 5 p.m. and 6.30 will be held in the conference hall in the Metropole building. We will round off the day with a dinner at 7 p.m. back here in the Borolak. This event is likewise re re reserved for invited guests. And Kurt Schellknecht, former head of the economics department and chief economist of the Swiss National Bank, will then give the dinner address. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to welcome our first speaker, Alan Meltzer. Alan Meltzer is distinguished visiting fellow at the Hoover Foundation and the Alan Meltzer University Professor of Political Economy at the Tepper School of, Econo of Business at Carnegie Mellon University. Alan was Karl Brunner's student, his co-author and a lifelong friend. They worked closely together for many years and co-authored more than 25 papers. Of all of the people in the room, he probably knew Karl the best. Alan is the leading historian of the Federal Reserve System, and his books provide a fascinating account of the way in which monetary policy was set in the 20th century. It's now my pleasure to give the floor to Alan, and he will present a paper titled Karl Brunner, Scholar and Appreciation. Alan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. 